But in terms of this event today, it is a personal statement masterclass where I'm joined by three university speakers from three different universities. And we're essentially going to support you when drafting your personal statement. So um, just to introduce who we've got today, we've got Gemma Champion, who's joined us from Swansea University. Gemma's going to open things up and Gemma's going to talk about what essentially a excellent personal statement looks like. And then we're going to pass things to Andrew, who's joined us from the University of Birmingham. And Andrew's going to talk about how to structure a personal statement, which is so important and, and, and almost where do you start when writing them. And then when we run these events, Poppy is going to finish things off and talk about nursing personal statements because we, when we run these events, we're always finding students say, well, how about my application in this subject on that subject? And, and nursing is the one that comes up a lot. So we're going to run a session just finishing off looking at nursing applications as well. So for any students that are interested in nursing or maybe some med medical courses at university, Poppy session will be really, really useful for you. Just before I pass things to Gemma, um, one thing that I'm always asked in terms of these events is where we can find out details of our recordings. And you can do so at unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays. And as well as live event, we record every single event. So it might be actually that you're watching the recording back at unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays today. But now if I can pass things to Gemma, Gemma's going to, um, Gemma's joining us from Swansea University and is going to run a session looking at essentially what a person, an excellent personal statement looks like. Over to you, Gemma. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gemma Champion, and I'm from Swansea University. And as John has kindly introduced, I'm going to tell you what to make, you know, how to make an excellent personal statement, your do's and don'ts, your things to avoid, what to put in and what to leave out. If anyone would like a copy of the slides or some examples of personal statements, some good ones, some bad ones, or any sort of advice, then please do not hesitate to get back in touch. Uh, my email address is up there for you and I will pop it up again at the end or John can make that available too. So what exactly is a personal statement so it's one thing that students can get quite um sometimes quite panicky about doing and they go oh, gosh it's such a big chunk of work but providing you do the prior planning and preparation and you know what is involved and uh, then it should sort of get you well on the way then to writing that excellent statement that will get you to the university and course of your choice now it is important for me to point out that you do only write one personal statement and for all your course choices so it has to be relevant and applicable to every single one so this is much easier if like me you did a i'm uh, did a geography degree and all the geography degrees were that i applied for for university were all the sort of same and um, it was quite nice and simple for me so it was all about geography if though you are applying for a range of different courses and hopefully they won't be too far away from each other, two sort of um, opposite sort of courses. Sometimes maybe students will apply for a geography and geology joint honours degree at one university and a geography degree in another university. Um, so you have to make then that judgment call on, you know, how much you dedicate to geography, how much to geology, that's purely your choice. And you can sort of weigh that up and think, where do I really want to go? How do I hedge my bets and place my odds? Okay, so the total line limit, so it will not let you do in excess of 47 lines. It will cut off on the 47th line. Um, there is a maximum character count of 4,000 characters, but that does take into consideration sort of your letters, your full stops, your punctuation marks, etc. Beware, um, spaces, I believe, also count as characters. So if you are separating paragraphs and including a full line space between each one that could eat into your character count so bear that in mind as well and your personal statement must demonstrate to the very best of your ability your interests your experience and your skills that make you a really suitable and excellent student to study that course at that university but please don't name drop a university because that one statement goes to every single one that you apply for. So you don't want to alienate the other four by talking about the one that you really want to go to and name dropping that uh, in the middle of the statement. So don't do that. So yeah, outline if you know your aims and ambitions. So you might know that after your degree, you want to go into a certain career. Perhaps if you're studying a law degree, you might know already at this stage that you want to go on to become a legal professional, either a solicitor, 
and do what's called um, an LPC course, a legal practice course, or perhaps a barrister and a pupillage and become, you know, take the bar and become a barrister. So if you do know those things, and no one's going to say to you in a job interview in five years time that in your UCAS personal statement in 2020, you said you wanted to be this. You know, we know things change, but it just shows that admissions tutor that you are sort of planning ahead. You're thinking about your future. If you don't know yet and you're just doing a subject that you love, that's fine. There's no need to put anything in. But, you know, if, if you are aware, then let them know. One thing I would really recommend as well is it's the admissions tutors that will be reading your personal statement. So they essentially are the ones, they may have tens of thousands to read through and a limited number of spaces available on that course. So they need to, to decide whether you go directly in the yes pile and you made an offer. And if so, what offer will that be? Will it be a conditional offer? And if so, what grades? It might be an unconditional offer if they really want you to come to that university. They may put you in the maybe pile if they're unsure and they haven't quite made up their mind whether you're a suitable candidate for the course or worst case scenario, we really want, don't want you going in the no pile or even worse, the bin. Um, so make sure that your personal statement is well planned, well structured and ticks all these boxes that you need to do. And the main thing that Swans University and any other university that you'll speak to today are looking for are these things. And I've highlighted there in capital letters. They really want to see your enthusiasm, your passion. And I say passion like that. It's one of the most overused words in the personal statement for that subject area. What have you read around the subject area? As a general rule of thumb, and this is just an average, you should be dedicating a minimum of 60 to 70% of your personal statement content to academic related content. You know, why that subject, um, perhaps what modules you're currently studying, what independent research you're currently conducting, uh, what journals you've read about that subject area. Okay, so um, make sure that you do mention that. And they will also want to see the other things as well, uh, your range of interests, your personality to come across on the page, along with your transferable skills and academic ability. And please make sure that your personal statement stands but for all the right reason and not for all of the wrong reasons. So I will be going through what not to put in and what to make sure that you definitely leave out. So the admissions tutors, like I said, they are the ones that read that statement and make the decision. I would recommend contacting them if you can in advance. So if you go on to a university website, you go under the contact tab, you will find the contact of either the, the admissions tutor, the program director or the course leader, whatever they call that person. And you can say, look, I'm really keen to come to your university. Please tell me what you look for in a psychology personal statement and hopefully you get a really nice reply back saying you know thank you for your inquiry we would like to see x y and z or they may give you a full bullet full um you know a couple of bullet points of what to put in send that off to all the universities you're thinking of applying to at least then that will give you some sort of structure and courage that you are doing the right things and discussing the right things in your statement so they want to know why what is your rationale, your justification for studying that course at university? And what makes you suitable to do that? What is your experience, your qualities, your academic background that will make you, you know, the most valuable student for that course? And like I said, if you know, you know, do you want to join certain clubs and societies? Do you want to play an active role in university life? So you may um, have a particular sport or interest, or you may want to join the psychology society if you're doing psychology, or perhaps uh, something along the lines of the bar society or the mooting sort of debating society um, in the law department. So let them know that so they can sort of envisage in their minds when they're reading your statement that yes, this person is going to be the best person on this course and they are really eager to get involved with all aspects. And it's always getting started. So 
Just get some words down on a page, even if they're random words, bullet points. You don't necessarily have to start with that opening sentence. That's, you know, people try and think, oh, get the best opening sentence to sort of hook the admissions tutors in from the get go. You know, you can always come back to that. Just start it anywhere and then you can play along with the structure and around with that structure at a later time. So, as I discussed, the dreaded opening line. So if you just Google the most overused opening lines in the UCAS personal statement, you will get a list and they do sometimes new lists every year. But generally speaking, these are the ones that show up. So we do not, or the admissions tutors do not want to know that you are currently studying A levels in X, Y, and Z, or a BTEC in this, or an Access Higher Education Diploma in health and social care, okay? And the reason they don't want that as an opening line is because they already know that information. You have inputted that into the UCAS form, so it's sort of a waste of a sentence, and it's not a very engaging or intriguing opening line, so leave that one well clear if you can. Along with a lot of cliches, so even if it was from a young age, you know, from an early age, ever since you're in the cot or in the womb, um, you know, that you've always been interested and fascinated by, you're going to have to come up with a much more imaginative way to sort of put that across and articulate that on paper, okay? And, and another one, for as long as I can remember, I've been interested in, fascinated by, passionate about, okay? Um, so something, we want something. So this sentence here, um, I think was a zoology student applying to Swansea University. Uh, shellfish such as the angel wing clam have exoskeletons that glow when exposed to ultraviolet light. Studying zoology would provide me with the skills to find explanations to mysteries such as this. So that really sort of gets the admissions tutor um, sort of excited almost really because it is a nice opening sentence that leaves you then carry on to the next paragraph with lots more to say. So a big no-no for those ones, but a nice tick for the one below. So include, you need to mention these things. So what interests, and obviously there's lots of synonyms. Uh, you can look on a thesaurus, but make sure that you aren't using too extravagant language also, um, and you use the words in the right context. So what interests you about your subject that you're currently studying, you know, discuss certain units. So whilst you can't say I'm currently studying A-level biology, you may want to say, as part of my A-level biology, I am currently conducting independent research, i.e. coursework, um, on the endocrine system, and I'm looking at Im immunology um, and particular, you know, um, ramifications of individuals with type 1 diabetes or whatever it may be that you are thinking of studying. So, you know, be specific. It's better to have less, um, more specific things, but fewer of them than just sort of general statements. Have you been on any relevant sort of education excursions? Perhaps if you are studying law, you may have gone into the Crown Court. Anybody can go into the Crown Court and sort of view a trial. And you may have been fascinated by the cross-examining style of a certain barrister and you conducted research on a certain law. You know, and what are the skills? So don't just say that you've been. What have you learned from these relevant trips? And work experience, so particularly relevant for certain subjects. Um, but if, if that is, then make sure you put it in. If not, don't be too worried. You may have part time employment and you can pull out the relevant transferable skills from there to sort of get your point across. And this here is really just an example of it's not just what you say, but it's how you say it. It's not embellishment, it's not lies. Um, but it just shows then, rather than just, I work part-time in Topshop, alongside my studies, I have a part-time position in an international fashion retail store, equipping me with, the, with a plethora, one of my favourite words, of transferable skills, and give some examples. So any statements that you make about yourself, please do give yourself uh, the sort of 
back, back it up then with concrete specific evidence wherever possible. And here are some of the transferable skills that you can mention if you feel appropriate in your personal statement. You could just Google these and you will get a range up there. Don't have to include them all. Maybe pick one or two and then back them up with the concrete evidence. And this is very important. So what super curricular activities? So things like guest lectures, summer schools, study days, any sort of enrichment activities that you have been proactive in doing yourself. Have you listened to podcasts, journals, um, anything like that, you know, and how has that um, sort of contributed then to your future plans and what other skills that you have gained? So this is a really super key bit to put in. So please do plan your statement. Don't waffle, be clear and concise throughout. Um, obviously make sure that you're honest and it's very rare that I get anyone that sort of undersells themselves, uh, sorry, oversells themselves. People tend to undersell themselves um, quite often. So do big yourself up, please. Um, stay well clear of quotations. Uh, the admissions tutors don't like those and be quite creative. Um, so avoid certain words and phrases as you can see there. You can use paragraphs to distinctly separate certain sections as well. And please don't. So don't attempt to cheat or buy online. That is plagiarism and you will get caught by the plagiarism detection software by UCAS called Copycatch, I think it is. Um, don't use humor, uh, gimmicks, um, because what you or I might find funny, an admissions tutor might think is, is not funny and it could go down the wrong way. Um, steer well, clear of cliches and don't just list things out of context. So back everything up, wherever, whatever you say. You can't use bullet points anyway, it won't let you. And please don't rely on the spell check. So proofread, read aloud. If you're having to take a breath, then that signals you need a full stop or a um, comma or a punctuation mark. And please don't rush or underestimate the time it takes to write an excellent personal statement. So that's um, all for me. If you'd like a copy of the slides, I'm very happy to send those as well. Thank you very much, Gemma. A really a great introduction, great first event looking at, at personal statements. And, and touched on the introductory stuff, but some really good do's and don'ts. Um, really enjoyed that, so thank you very much. And if you've got any questions for Gemma, Gemma is going to be available on the chat, so do send any questions on the Q&A, and Poppy's um, also on Q&A as well, so do please send them on. Now, if I could introduce our second speaker, which is Andrew Hunter. Andrew is joining us from the University of Birmingham. And there might be a couple of things that Andrew actually says. It's similar to the that the, the Gemma's um, mentioned, um, but it's, it's great just to reinforce those those key bits and bobs. So if there is, um, apologies for that, but I think it's really, really key information. So fingers crossed, Andrew will still include it. And Andrew is gonna talk about how to structure a personal statement. I can't tell you how many students I speak to that have got loads of information about themselves ready to go in a personal statement, but just have not got a barking clue what to do then in terms of structuring it. And no doubt, Andrew, you know, working with the University of Birmingham will have the same thing all the time when he speaks to students. So he's very kindly going to do a um, 15 minute ish session looking at how to structure a personal statement. And with that, Andrew, over to you, please. OK, so as John said, I'm going to be talking about how to structure and write your personal statement. I will build on um, the kind of knowledge of what a personal statement is. I'm actually focus more specifically on actually the writing style, what you can do to make your statement stronger what to cover and what to include, how to actually develop it ultimately so it actually reads well, it flows well, and it makes sense ultimately. So, first of all, how to actually write it. It is about being enthusiastic, of course. It is about being concise and natural. You see this all the time, and I'm sure the other speakers have had the same, where personal statements, people try to use overcomplicated language, trying to sound smart. It just does not work. Just try and be that natural, concise vision of you basically it is being careful again about humor quotes or anything unusual but the structure i will keep saying this is so so vital it is there to reflect you as a person and those who spend then the extra time making sure their personal statements are well structured tend to be the students who have the stronger personal statements overall so in terms of the actual structure around 70 percent of the statements should focus on those academic and course related information 
every university is slightly different. UCAS is slightly different than the guidelines, so it is roughly around there. But have a look at the universities you're interested in. They will have a dedicated personal statement website traditionally, and they'll be able to tell you what they recommend. And for us, the remaining 30%, we would recommend including relevant, relevant information, that's the key word there, on those extracurricular activities. So in terms of the actual structure, as I've mentioned, the bulk of the statement should be academic in its focus. A, it does need to convey an interest, convey that passion, and convey your knowledge of the subject. So your introduction will introduce that, and I will talk about these sections a little bit in more detail in a moment. Your section two and three are your interest in the subjects and wider skills. These two can link together and form your main body of your personal statement. And then finally, your concluding statement to wrap up what it is and why you are the best person for that subject, because that's what you want to prove ultimately. So the op opening paragraph needs to be strong. It needs to encourage the reader to read on. Admissions tutors have thousands of these personal statements to read every single year. You do not want to bore them from the beginning. You do not want to lose their interest. They are human. You have to remember that they're not robots. You need to engage them. You need to be interesting. But ultimately, avoid those cliches. It doesn't happen as much now, but people who used to always say, I wanted to be a doctor since I was born. It's rubbish. It's a cliche. It's not true. Just avoid these kind of cliches. And... As it's been mentioned, you want to demonstrate your passion. You don't want to just say you're passionate. Uh, anyone can say that. I could convince you I'm passionate about chemistry. It's about demonstrating and showing in your writing. You are keen, you are a little bit dorky about the subject. That's what you want to be doing. So frequent opening sentences, again, it's, it, they are common. The, we don't want to see them. Try and be original, try and think away. And don't just say, as I've said, you, why are you applying for the course? What is it that you're interested in? We want to know about you. We don't want to just hear your dreams from when you were born, all those cliches. The main paragraphs are where key. A common mistake students make is they try and order their examples, experiences in chronological order. Don't do that. You want to put your most relevant and your most unique examples of skills and experiences and interest in the subject towards the front because those are the ones that are going to catch the admissions tutors eye. As I said, they are just human. You need to keep them engaged from the beginning. So don't think, oh, I need to start with year 10 and work my way uh, towards year 13. Put your best examples to begin with. As I've said, you need to convey your interest in the subject, but by bringing in relevant skills and experiences and achievements, you need to have and limit yourself to a couple of experiences that relate to your course. I've read many personal statements and I see so many where people will try to get every example in. And then as a result, their personal statements are weaker. They don't have the depth. They don't have the passion there because they are trying to shoehorn every single thing they've ever done. You need to be clever. You need to be smart and plan to actually structure it so you only focus on your strongest and most relevant examples. The ending itself it is quite a tricky thing to write. I know I'm sure you all wrote essays. You all wrote similar things. And conclusions always can be quite hard, but it's still a kind of similar rule of thumb. You want to tie it back to what you've written earlier and re-emphasize your suitability. But you have to be careful that you aren't just repeating yourself. Um, you do want to reiterate those kind of key skills and ultimately have that closure. But if you are just writing the same thing, it's going to fall a bit flat at the ending. This is your chance to really show them you are the right person. You can talk about your future, your plans and your conclusion if you, your university course fits into that plan. But as a general rule, I would stay clear of lots of new information. So in terms of your actual structure of your personal statement, one um, way of structuring your paragraphs, and I swear this works, and I've always strongly believe this, and I've told hundreds of students this, I've seen other colleagues in the sector do this, is something called ABC. In school, you probably got sick of hearing that point ever explain in your English lessons, but it is a similar kind of format. And it, does work, it, is, it keeps you on top, it keeps you structured. So the A is introducing your activity. What is it that you have done? So did you go volunteering in Ghana? Great, tell us about it. What is it that you did? Then what makes your personal statement stronger is if you focus on the B, which is the benefit. It's great you went to Ghana, fantastic. But what did you actually get out of it? What skills did you gain from that experience? And most importantly, this is the part that sometimes students don't do, and this is where you separate the good statements from the best statements, is link it to your course, the C. 
So you went to Ghana, you got all these great skills. Who cares? Why does that matter? Why, do, why is that going to help you to be a lawyer? Why does that help you to be a psychologist? Link it back to your course. If you can't link it back to your course, maybe it's not the best example to use. And a key tip I always recommend to people is if you've got your universities and your courses that you're interested in applying to, look on the website for that course in that university and they tend to list the skills you will gain from that subject. Those are the skills they're probably looking out for in your personal statement as well. So think of examples that link into those examples, basically. Ultimately, with the ABC format, it's less of what you've done. It's more of what you've got out of it. So you want to be focusing more on that B and C, the benefit, the skills you gain, and also why, who cares? Why does it link to your course? And I think that is a really, really simple way of structuring your statement that it actually reads well and it covers what you need to, and it actually hits the criteria that the admissions officers are looking for. So as an example, people often talk about their experience of sport in their personal statements. And sometimes you read it and you think, why are you telling me this? It does not link at all. So a top one is a common sentence you might see in a personal statement that they're just captain of this football team and they've been good at sports. Big deal. Who cares? Um, the second statement, it's not the strongest, don't get me wrong, because it probably isn't the best example. Um, but what they've done is they've put about their experience as being a captain and they've actually done what they actually did in the role. They had to communicate. They had to deal with difficult situations, relaying instructions, and then they've linked it to their cause, in this case, geography and why it matters. Because they've argued that for a geographer needs to be able to work as a team. They need to be able to communicate to various audiences. So that's how you get those examples and how you structure it. If you follow a format like that, you are on your way. You will have a strong personal statement. So, in terms of actually that's the structure, but actually how to write about your course, um, it is really vital that you do do some extra research, do some extra reading, but don't just shoehorn loads of books you've read, loads of quotes you've read, everybody quotes as a general rule, but we don't need to hear you've read this, you read this, you read that. Tell us about maybe an example or two, what you got out of it, what did you learn, reflect on your experiences. You can talk about what you're studying at the moment, but ultimately it's better, it tends to be better if you're looking beyond what you're studying at the moment. What are you doing in your spare time that shows the real top quality students because they are putting the time away from their studies to look into the area they're passionate about. Where has that interest to come from as well? Don't do the cliches, as I've said. And if you can link it to current affairs, it's always worth doing, but it's a kind of a heads up. If you're interested in a kind of political subject, avoid a topic like Brexit. It's so entrenched in its views and everyone will be writing about it you'll just seem like another cliche. So do avoid something like that. You can also talk as well about any experiences you've had from the extra curricular point of view. If you've been to summer schools, even if they were virtual this year, if you went to lectures, you don't need to talk about the university. You don't need to name the university at all. Just what did you actually learn from the experience and what did you get out of it? Talk about documentaries all day as well, what you found interesting, what did you enjoy? I would strongly, strongly encourage you not to talk about TV shows though. Uh, the latest ones seem to be people talking about suits when they're interested in the law. Do not do that. Do not talk about fiction when you're writing an academic personal statement. You can talk, as I said, about journals, articles, texts you've read. Google Scholar is always a really good starting point. And your kind of influences and experiences as well, if they are appropriate. So these are hopefully all kind of quite common sense, quite knowledgeable in terms of you should be doing these but making sure you are honest, you are using good grammar, good spelling, good vocabulary, get people to proof your teachers, um, your friends, your family, get as many people proof as possible. Take your time, like, it does take longer than you actually anticipate to write a personal statement. There will be draft after draft after draft. If you want to do it right, and you want to structure it right so it flows and it shows you are passionate, you need to put the time into it. Avoid starting every sentence with I, don't use lists, we want to hear about your experiences, but we want to know what you got out of it. So don't just list what you've done. So to kind of conclude, um, for me, the most important thing I feel you can get out of my talk is the ABC method. That is, for me, vital in terms of having a structure, having a flow to what you want to write. You might not necessarily want to use the exact same uh, method, but what the ABC does, it leads you to actually answer what the admissions tutors are looking for because you'll always link it back to the course of your interest. So I would strongly do recommend using the ABC. Structure is really, really key ultimately. Even beyond the ABC, having your structure, making sure you are talking 
predominantly about your academic interests and then having those skills to back it up. Having that structure will have a well-written statement. And fundamentally as well, I can't emphasize enough, don't tell me you're passionate, like demonstrate it. If you are passionate, we will be able to tell by reading your statement. You don't need to keep saying I'm passionate, I'm hungry, I have a desire. Write about your interest and we will know if you're passionate or not. So I think that's everything from me. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I hope that was useful and I'll hand back to John. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, another excellent session. And I know, I know Andrew mentioned it a few times, but I can't stress enough the ABC, how much of a fan I am as well. Uh, one of the biggest issues you ever get, which Andrew touched on and, and also Gemma touched on, is where students will talk about personal savings and say, I have done this, I have done this, I have done this. The B and the C are so important, make it relevant to the course, etc. So that, that, that was a brilliant session as well. Really, really appreciate that. In terms of the final session today, um, Poppy is going to talk about personal statements looking essentially for nursing applications. Now, it's really tricky with these events to provide subject specific content. Um, but one I'm always asked whenever we run these events is, is, is how about nursing? Um, so it's great that Poppy's going to join us today talking about nursing personal statements. And, and it's the final session today. So if you're watching live and not interested in, in nursing university applications, um, you know, do feel free to, to tune off at this point. But if you've got friends and family that will find this useful, we are going to we are recording this event and we'll have this up as a separate video as well. But no doubt it's going to be really, really useful content for lots of students. So our final speaker is Poppy Ring, who's joining us from the University of Greenwich with a session on personal statements for nursing applications. Over to you, Poppy. As John mentioned, I am from the uh, University of Greenwich. I work in the education support team. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you um, about personal statements writing personal statements for nursing um, or health programs. Full disclosure, I'm not a nursing admissions tutor, um, but as John mentioned, this is something that we often get questions about when we go into schools and colleges. So I've put together um, what, what we've learned and what we, what we know from working with our admissions tutors to hopefully put something together that's really useful for you. So I think the first thing to start to think about is why are personal statements important? Um, because it, it does feel a massive part of your UCAS application. Um, and personal statements, as, as we've mentioned today, are really important for, for you to demonstrate why it is that you would be a brilliant student on, that, on the, the degree or the course that you're looking to apply for. And also talking about your interest and being able to demonstrate um, your enthusiasm for that particular course. But also when you're looking at something like a nursing personal statement, so it could be nursing, midwifery, primary science, it could be teaching, social work, something that's more vocational. Um, it tends to be a two-step application process and the actual UCAS application and your personal statement is step one if you like and then the second bit is the interview. So quite often your personal statement for those particular um, degree programs are the springboard um, for your interview. So it's really important when you're thinking about writing your personal statement for, for those types of degrees as I mentioned, particularly like nursing that that could be potentially used for you to discuss further um, within your interview as well. So that's something really important to bear in mind. So going on to think about what nursing admissions tutors look for in a personal statement, um, and what I've got here, this is the lovely Julie, who is the um, admissions tutor in the School of Health Sciences at the University of Greenwich. And what she's looking for um, in a personal statement for, for nursing programmes are um, an being able to show an ability to care for other people selflessly, which is really key. Um, and the other thing that I do want to mention as well is sometimes people tend to think of nursing as just one big bracket, but just be aware that there are different branches within nursing that you'll need to make reference to within your personal statement. So for example, lots of universities offer things like adult nursing, children's nursing, mental health nursing, um, and they're all quite different in terms of the types of people that you'd be caring for. So it's really important that you know before you write your personal statement which branch of nursing it is that you're looking to specialise in um, and, and referencing that within your personal statement. Being able to care for other people selfishly is a really key part of that. Um, and you might have also heard before about something called the six C's, um, which, which exists across the NHS. And they're essentially the values that the NHS wants their staff, particularly nurses, for example, to demonstrate um, within their everyday work. And that care is probably the, the core of that. But then you've also got compassion, competence, communication, courage and commitment. So try and keep those in your mind whilst you're starting to think about your personal statement. Um, the other thing that, that nursing admissions tutors look for is a strong and realistic in, interest in the profession of nursing, for example. Um, the reason that we say that is because I think lots of people have different ideas about what it is to actually be a nurse. And, and you know, I'm sure everybody's aware it's a very challenging um, career to, to go into. And, and you really need to understand the realities of, of what being a nurse um, in that profession is going to be like. 
Um, the other thing which, which is similar to, to, quite, to lots of different degree programmes that you might be writing a personal statement for is being able to evidence um, the skills and qualities that you have that will make you a brilliant candidate. So it could be that you've got brilliant communication skills or interpersonal skills or team working skills that you think would be really relevant um, for a nursing degree and then going on to become a nurse afterwards. And also resilience and motivation to complete your degree. Um, as I've just mentioned, it is a very challenging um, career pathway to go into, um, as, do, as tends to be the case with lots of different vocational courses. So what admissions students are looking for is, is really understanding your motivation. Why is it that you want to study that particular subject? And what is it that you want to go on to do? Is it that you want to specialise within a specific field because of something that you, you know, you're really interested in? What, what is it that's motivating you? And resilience is going to be key. I feel like we hear resilience all the time at the moment with you know everything that's going on but being able to demonstrate that you can learn and study independently and you do have that resilience to, to you know bounce back when things potentially aren't necessarily going the way that you want them to but to still continue with your studies is going to be really key so another thing that we often get questions about particularly for um, nursing courses but also other vocational courses is you know what about work experience what kind of work experience do i need to talk about so it's important here to, to say that lots of univers different universities will have different entry requirements. So it's really, it is worth having a look at the universities that you're interested in to see what their guidelines are around work experience. So for us at, at Greenwich, we say that, you know, work shadowing observation is encouraged if you can do it. So if it's possible for you to do so. Lots of people find it very difficult as well because they see that work experience is required for, for programmes like nursing or midwifery um, and they get quite bogged down and worried about how they're going to do that because it is difficult to get work experience on a ward um, particularly if you are under 18 so what I would say and what my advice would be is, is don't fixate on thinking you know you have to be in a hospital you have to be in a ward look at the other areas that you could potentially have some work experience in or, or do some shadowing as part of um, or it might be that you're doing a part-time job that actually really links in with that so for example it might be that you're currently working at a care home um, it might be that you, you do some volunteer voluntary work with people in the community or vulnerable people or with children particularly if you wanted to go and do something like children's nursing so being able to talk about those things um, in the context of work experience is really valuable so don't just think got to be an award and um, there are other ways that you can do it and as I've said it's, it's an encourage we, we encourage it but it's not um, compulsory for you to have done the work experience at Greenwich but do check other universities as well um, the other thing that you can also talk about with with work experience is um, Lots of people have personal experiences of, of care um, or, you know, of being in that kind of capacity. So it could be that, you know, potentially you might be caring for somebody at home. So it might be that, you you know, you care for a parent or a child, brother, sister, or you've been involved in that. Or it might be that, you know, you're a sibling or somebody has spent quite a lot of time in hospital. Um, or it might be that you've spent a lot of time in hospital yourself as a child and that kind of gave you that you know sparked your interest in potentially going on to then become a nurse yourself in the future that's absolutely fine for you to talk about um, within your personal statement as long as you're comfortable to share that um, and, and that's kind of considered on an individual basis as well but the key thing with the work experience is that we we want you to demonstrate it if you have it demonstrated talk about it in your in your personal statement and talk about what you've learned from that experience um, and if you can, another really good thing to do is to apply that to the current context um, and, and show an awareness of some of the issues that are within the profession um, currently, um, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a moment's time as well. So there are lots of different things that you can include as well as work experience. We've kind of touched on job shadowing. It might be that you've done an internship. Um, with a company or an organisation and it doesn't always necessarily have to be that that particular um, job or internship has to be specific within um, healthcare settings it could be that, the, that you know the part-time job that you've done it might be as we, we looked at before that you've worked in, in a shop or you worked in retail but through that you know you've developed your team working you've also understand you know customer service and how to, to, to deal with people the public which is going to be a big part of your role um, within something like a nursing nursing um, degree as well so that's also something you could talk about um, MOOCs if you've never heard of them before are massive open online courses um, and the, the website that springs to mind for me is Future Learn, and that has lots of different free online courses that you can you can have a look at and there are lots of different um, subject areas that are part of that. There's um, quite a big section on healthcare, um, so for example there are short courses in, in specific aspects but there's also one that I saw, I think it was earlier today or yesterday, about um, different global responses um, to COVID-19 in different countries and how that 
that's impacted healthcare sectors. So it's really useful if you've got an interest and you think, well, I'm not really sure if I know enough about that, or I'm not, you know, don't feel 100% confident yet. Have a look at places like Future Learn um, to see if there's a course that you could do to, to kind of increase your confidence and your knowledge. Um, journals and reviews are also really good to have a look at and, and I know before we've mentioned Google Scholar so that's another place that you can look at. Um, Taster days in summer schools, um, again these can be virtual so if you've done anything this year that was online, um, again you don't have to reference the university that you went to just to say that you you know, you know you took part in a might be a health and social care virtual taster day for example, what did you learn from that, why did that then inspire you to then want to pursue um, this particular uh, degree option. Things like the Duke of Edinburgh or NCS, I know that, that probably, you know, didn't run last year, but it might be that you're going to do this again um, this year or you've done it in the past. They're really great things for you to be able to talk about and reflect on in your personal statement. Um, quality newspapers you can have a look at so that you can understand um, you know some of the current uh, news and, and policies and things that are having an impact on the on the you know, healthcare sector, for example, if you're looking at nursing, are really good to have a look at. Um, and a lot of those like quality newspapers are online as well. Um, and I'm not talking about things like the Daily Mail, Sidebar of Shame, when I'm talking about quality newspapers. We're talking more about things like the Financial Times, the Observer, the Guardian, those kinds of things that you can have a look at. Um, and even if you only buy one newspaper, you know, every two weeks, just have a quick look and see what's through there. That, that's something that you could do. Um, online forums are really good to have a look at for, for additional, you know, things if, if you're, you know, interested in that area and blogs as well. So specifically for nursing, um, the uh, Nursing Times is something really good. It's an online site that has news articles and also blogs. And there are some blogs on there from um, student nurses. So it's really good if you are thinking about pursuing um a degree in nursing or midwifery or, or something along those lines having a look at some of the student blog posts that are out there because that will really help to inform your decision um, and also give you something else to think about and, and potentially help you to kind of structure your personal statement as well so these are all different things that you can include as part of that so just to touch on so it might be that you've you know you thought about what you want to include you know what the admission students are looking for you're getting down to it to get started um, and it's useful to know what you shouldn't be doing. I know we've kind of touched on do's and don'ts before, but just to reiterate some of the, the key things that we see and some of the mistakes that I wouldn't want you to make. So it's not a letter. You don't need to structure your personal statement like a letter. You don't need to write dear admissions tutor or anything like that. Um, it's not your life story. So for some people, obviously we, we, your personal statement is a really useful tool for, for universities to get to know you and understand your motivations, but we don't need to know, you know where you were born who your cousin is, all of those kinds of things. It, it needs to be more concise than that. Um, it's also not an academic essay, so you don't necessarily need to list every single book that you've read that would be relevant. You need to really tie it in to how that links to your um, to, to what you're interested in studying, essentially. And it's also not the place to list your qualifications. You don't need to start by telling us that you study a BTEC in health and social care, for example, because you've already put that on your UCAS application um, and you, you'd be wasting your, your, your lines and your characters that you only have a, a you know, finite number of anyway, so you, so you don't need to do that. In terms of getting started, um, we've got some opening lines just here just for you to kind of reflect on. Um, and UCAS every year publish the most used opening lines. And one of the most used opening lines for nursing degrees is nursing is a very challenging and demanding career. So you need to try and be a bit more original um, and imaginative with, with what you start with and potentially avoid using that phrase. Um, I've already touched on, you know, talking about I'm currently completing my BTEC in health and social care and would like to continue my studies in this. Again, we, we know that you've already studied, that you are studying or have studied that BTEC. Um, but what it is good to do is potentially talk about um, later on within your personal statement. There might be a, a specific module. So it might be that you've done a module on anatomy, for example, that you really enjoyed. And you can see that what you've learned there, you can build upon within this particular degree subject, for example. Um, and probably a, a really good way to start is using this final example. So witnessing the excellent care that my grandfather received from his palliative care nurses and their dedication to his complex needs initiated my interest in nursing. So it's original, it's something different. Um, you've clearly outlined at the start why you're interested in, in, in this degree topic. Um, and I think that that's a really positive um, way and a really good way of starting your, your personal statement, just to give you an example. So just to share finally, um, some of the uh, my top tips for you would be to be original, honest and authentic um, and write your personal statement yourself 
really because you know there is you cash use some very um very um good plagiarism software called copycatch so it will be found if you've copied something from a template somewhere um but also because as i've mentioned particularly with things like nursing midwifery paramedic science social work teaching your personal statement is a springboard for your interview so if you've written something in your personal statement that you haven't actually done or you're not you know it, it wasn't really something that you you really did when they ask you an interview it's going to be quite difficult for you to then talk about it so just be aware of that um, we've already touched on showing an awareness of current issues, particularly in nursing, for example, if nursing is what you want to do, but within the, the topic that you're, you're looking to apply for, being able to, to talk about and evidence your academic curiosity and your subject interest. So why is it that you're interested in it? What have you learned? What, where does this come from? Tell us, tell us more about that. Explain that. Um, identifying your goals and your reasons for wanting to study the course. So as I mentioned at the beginning, it could be that you want to become um, a, ch a children's nurse but specialises in neonatal care for example something like that so being able to tell us where it is that you want to go and, and where you're going to apply that um, within the profession um, and also as we've mentioned earlier as well being able to demonstrate how you are resilient and an independent learner particularly for vocational courses where we know that it is a challenging um, a challenging area to study um, and I think that was everything so I hope you found that useful and thank you for listening <laughs>